Hello dear viewers, students and those uh, who are listening to me, Assalamu alaikum. I would like to warmly welcome you to my online and this video lecture presentation. And I hope that you are all well by the grace of Almighty. And with this, I am going to start off my session uh, that is uh, for HSC classes. This lecture has been prepared and made for HSC first year students. So dear students, please uh, stay with me until I finish all the slides. So let's get started. Okay, uh, the unforgettable history, unit one, lesson one by, uh, and it's of course the lecture number two. Previously, I have uh, given one more lecture of this uh, lesson. So this is the sequence of that lecture. And uh, in this lecture, I have included uh, some sort of activities and exercises which are very much relevant and related to your exam syllabus. And my email ID has also been given for any kind of queries or difficulties. Feel free to email me mazharul.hawk at alumni.uts.edu.au. So dear students, with this, I'm going to uh, start of today's session. Thank you very much. Let's get started. Okay, uh, before I actually uh, discuss all the activities of this chapter, I want you to have a look at the 7th March speech of Bongo Bondhu, which is actually translated in English. If you have a, you know, quick look and a very concentrated look upon the speech, you will be able to uh, solve your problems. Uh, so please have a look at the speech uh, given by Bongo Bondhu. The historic Salmon March speech by the father of the nation, Bongo Bondhu Sheikh Muzibur Rahman, was a de facto declaration of Bangladesh's independence. It has been declared as World Heritage by the UNESCO and has been recognized in the memory of the World International Register. This great speech has not yet been preserved in English audio version. So Education Interior builds up an audio version of this speech in English with a view to disseminating its immense significance to every corner of the world. My brothers, I come before you today with a heart laden with sadness. You are aware of everything and you know everything that has happened. We have tried with our lives and yet the sadness remains that today in Dhaka, Chattogram, Khulna, Rashahi and Rangku, the streets are sucked with the blood of my brothers. Today the people of Bengal desire emancipation. The people of Bengal wish to leave. The people of Bengal demand that their rights be acknowledged. What wrong have we committed? In the elections, the people of Bangladesh entrusted me and the Aumilik with the totality of their electoral support. It was our expectation that the parliament would meet, that we would frame our constitution, that we would develop this land, that the people of this country would achieve their economical, political and cultural freedom. But it is a matter of grief that today we are constrained to say in all sadness that the history of the past 23 years has been the history of persecution of the people of Bengal. A history of shedding blood of the people of Bengal. This history of the past 23 years has been one of the agonizing cries of men and women. The history of Bengal has been a history where the people of this land have made the streets and highways of this land crimson with their blood. We have shed our blood in 1952. In 1954, we owned the election and yet were not allowed to hold power. In 1958, 
I have Khan imposed martial law and kept the nation in a state of slavery for 10 years. On 7 June 1966, when the sons of my land rose in support of the Six Point Movement, they were mown down in gunfire. When Yahya Khan took over, after Ayub Khan fell in the fury of the movement of 1969, he promised that he would give us a constitution, give us democracy. We placed our faith in him. And then history moved a long way. The elections took place. I met President Yahya Khan. I appealed to him, not just as the majority leader of Bengal, but also as the majority leader of Pakistan, to convene the National Assembly on 15 February. He did not pay heed to my appeal. He listened to Mr. Bhutto, and he said that the Assembly would be convened in the first week of March. I agreed with him and say we would see in the assembly i said that we would discuss matters in the assembly i even went to the extent of suggesting that despite our party being the majority if anyone proposed anything that is legitimate okay dear students uh, i think uh, you can watch the whole video later on when you will have uh, enough time uh, we have time constraint uh, in this lecture so we cannot actually play the whole video but uh, of course uh, i encur strongly encourage you to check and uh, whole watch the whole video uh, which is actually translated into, into into english and if you watch the whole video you will get uh, sufficient ideas about the speech of bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman and of course that could be very much helpful for you to solve your exercise problems so let's go to the next slide Okay, uh, I want you to finish off, uh, though I couldn't finish it today, but you must watch the video uh, in the YouTube or the link that I've shared. So perhaps you have watched the video and now I would like to, to take you to some textual activities. Okay, dear students, uh, this is the question that could follow after watching the video. Can you compare the speech with other famous speeches in the history that you know about? Yes, this speech can be compared to the speech entitled I Have a Dream, which is a public speech delivered by American civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr. on August 28, 1963. In that speech, Martin Luther King calls for an end to racism in the, in the United States. The speech of Bangabandhu can also be compared to another monumental and concise speech known as the Gettysburg Address of Abraham Lincoln and this speech reiterated the end of slavery and restoration of humanity between the black and the white in America. So you can see that Bangabandhu's historic speech has uh, been compared here only it has been compared with two uh, you know monumental speeches but it can also be compared with other great speeches of the world as well okay let us go to the next slide okay uh, you have to actually come across or introduced be introduced with uh, some keywords or phrases that has been used in this uh, chapter i want you to take a look at those speech uh, keywords overflowing with grief i wish with bloods hold the sessions of national assembly economic political and cultural freedom Tor torture inflicted on our people, crimson with their blood, martial law to enslave us, launched six-point movement, restore democracy, doors of negotiations, end up a slaughterhouse, dissolved all of a sudden, assembly session was prorogued, firm determination. I think uh, if you uh, try to catch the meaning of these phrases and meanings, it will be very much helpful for you to, it will be very much benefited for you to get the whole idea from the text. Overflowing means actually something is overflown, something is actually flowing in extra or in excess. Overflowing is grief, that is ex excessive grief. 
awash with blood that is tinted with blood or the blood uh, uh, saturated hold the sessions of national assembly means uh, the assembly or the parliament sessions uh, has been you know held up or stopped for a while economic political cultural freedom torture inflicted on our people inflicted means actually imposed or pushed to someone or something crimson with their blood that is uh, become reddened with something the color has become tinted and besmeared and reddened with blood martial law to slave us law six point movements means uh, six point movements have been introduced and put into action restore democracy means democracy has been uh, put into uh, action once again or has been established once again doors of negotiations that is the doors of the possibilities of uh, understanding or compromise end up a slaughterhouse that is everything has been messed up and uh, came to a sort of destruction dissolved all of a sudden that is uh, parliament has been stopped or adjourned or suspended for a while assembly session was prorogued to the same thing like adjourned or suspended firm determination that is strong will power so these words will be helpful for you to uh, you know to solve all kinds of problems of this exercise let us go to the next slide the wretched and downtrodden people of the land that is the you know the destitute people who are helpless came to the streets spontaneously people came to the streets um, with uh, full vigor without any kind of uh, pressure uh, that is uh, they came out without any flexibly and without any kind of pressure uh, being mowed down with bullets that is someone uh, is shot with bullets someone or somebody is show, shot with bullets and um, it has uh, given them the um, uh, defeated uh, very much you know bent down with the power of bullets being deprived of the children people are being massacred that is uh, mass killing uh, people killing in large numbers dissolved the assembly that is prorogued the assembly or adjourned the assembly stopped the assembly for a while blood spilled on our streets that is blood came out and you know saturated the whole area um, with a just like water uh, flowing on the streets waiting over the blood that is uh, coming across or crossing over blood someone is crossing over a road uh, with a, a flow of blood return all army personnel into the barracks that is uh, commanding the army personnel or pressurizing the army personnel to go back to their own barracks have to go through hardships that is the miseries or you know the you know the want of uh, basic human uh, needs convert every house into a fort that is uh, make every house um, into a kind of uh, fighting force so that they can fight against the Pakistani soldiers go down striving for our rights that is uh, someone we need to actually hold our rights tight and uh, we have to fight to establish our rights no one can suppress suppress there is no one can uh, you know put it down no one can keep it off create chaos and confusion that is creating confusing situations uh, kind of deans or some sort of uh, you know anomalies create anarchy and loot uh, anarchy means uh, self uh, destruction or you know imposing destruction upon someone without any kind of reason and loot means uh, you know uh, snatching away people's wealth and other you know important properties transmit uh, news abroad that the news will have to be uh, pushed to other countries taint ourselves in any way that is we have uh, you know painted or dyed ourselves with the uh, blood of the brave soldiers of the nations made to exterminate that is came to an end that is came to a finish or finishing line so these are the words that has been that have been actually used uh, in this long speech of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman uh, and I want you to put a special care upon these uh, words so let us go to the next slide. summary of the text. Uh, the historic speech of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman finds a beautiful expression in this passage. The great leader expressed his great sorrow by emphasizing the streets of different cities of this country were awash and tinted with the blood of common people. 
He also informed that the rulers of the then Pakistan deprived us of our rights. The people of the country passed through 23 tragic years and they wanted to free to live peacefully and enjoy their rights. So in a limited uh, you know, area or in a very uh, you know, concise uh, shape, I have tried to bring all the important ideas from the passage. Now let us move on to the next slide. Uh, this is a very important exercise for your exam or for your syllabus. Flowchart first has been done for you, bloodshed in the language moment. So you have to read the question carefully. Read the text and make a flowchart showing the background of the liberation wire. First one has been done for you, showing the background of the. So you have to thinking about the liberation words and its background and you have to make phrases, uh, not more than three or four words. And of course, it will not be become a sentence. It will be a small chunk of sentences or the phrases that we'll have to made, make for this flowchart. First one has been given, bloodshed in language. The second one I made for you, failure to form government in 1954. So you have to read the question again and again, showing the background of the liberation. So you have to think everything relating to the background of the liberation word. So number three, declaration of martial law in 1958 launching six-point movement in 1966, mass movement in 1969, victory in general election in 1970. So dear students, when you solve flowchart or when you make flowcharts, you have to draw the rectangular spaces. Um, all the boxes will have to be very, you know, similar in shape. You have to put down the serial numbers and of course you have to use the arrow directions actually i have a lecture which i have already given on flowchart you can check those lectures uh, where i have discussed very i have discussed all the important information on flowcharts so dear students let us go to the move next slide okay uh, there are some questions which are actually called post-training sessions questions uh, after uh, you know completing all the important information let us solve the answers in accordance with the historic speech of Bangabandhu, what are the demands of the people then? According to Bangabandhu, the people of Bengal desired to be free, wanted to live better, and most importantly, they believed that they would gain the legal rights. Which features of the speech do you appreciate most? The starting point of the speech is touching because of Bangabandhu's love for the nation. The concluding part of the speech is also very poignant because he made the whole nation brave enough to fight against the invading army of the then West Pakistan. So these are the two important questions. Now let us discuss the other two important questions. Okay. What are the two main parts of the speech? One of the two main parts of the speech is presenting before the nation, the faults and atrocities perpetuated by the then West Pakistanis. The second part is to make the whole nation blood bold enough to start final struggle against the perpetrators. Perpetrators means the West Pakistanis, the soldiers who actually, uh, you know, betrayed uh, with the Bengali nationals. Number four, and the last question, why does Bangabandhu say that 23 years of our history with Pakistan is a history of repression and bloodshed? It is so said because during the whole period, Bengalis were repressed and they had to shed blood on nominal excuses. So these are the four post uh, reading session questions. Hope it helps and it will be helping you. So dear students, with this, I'm gonna uh, say you goodbye for this session. Hope uh, you will enjoy it and you have enjoyed it. I want you to, uh, I always encourage you to look at the lecture very concentratedly with your full vigor and attention. Otherwise you cannot catch the whole idea that has been discussed in the brain. Of course, don't use to, don't forget to use the headphones when you uh, listen and watch the lectures. So with this, I'm going to thank you once again for this. Thanks for watching. Okay, thank you very much.